this is my favorite disease. <laughs> Not in cats, <laughs> but when it comes to the stigma and the enigma of this disease and what they do and don't know. And this is where we as a cat, a cat family, it takes us to make this better. And the only way we can make it better is if we're willing to admit if we've had a kitty have this. It's embarrassing. Nobody wants to admit it. it you feel like it could be the end of your cattery. But 80 to 90% of the cats in here, of all of your cats, 80 90% of them have coronavirus. It's, there's no way around it. It is. If you have a coronavirus-free cattery, that's good and bad. But 80 to 90% of the cats, of your cats, will have coronavirus. No big deal. Who cares? Um, but it's when that feline coronavirus becomes, when it changes, when it mutates, when it becomes what I call the cancer form of coronavirus, that it's a big deal. It only happens in 5 to 10% of cats. When I say that, it only happens in 5 to 10% of all of the cats. I would say it's more like 20%, 20 to 30% in our cattery cats because of the genetics. The genetics plays a huge role. So when they say, oh, it only happens 5 to 10% of the time, yes, okay, great. But that's in your normal cat population. And in catteries, we don't have a normal cat population. Your enteric coronavirus, which is the coronavirus that all of your kitties have, they may cause some diarrhea. The first time they get infected, they may get a little bit of diarrhea. Kittens, that five to six week little bit of diarrhea, they just don't feel very good for three to four days, they're probably getting coronavirus. They're probably getting exposed to it for the first, they're finally starting to get it, and they're getting a little bit of diarrhea from it. It can make them not wanna eat, it can make them have some diarrhea, usually three to four days, a little bit of supportive care, all of a sudden they're over it, and that's the last you hear of it. However, um, the coronavirus, when they're having that diarrhea, they can be shedding high levels of it in their feces. Mom um, can go in, in and out of mom's litter box, which they start to, you know, do four to five weeks. You know, they start going in and out of mom's litter box. They're getting big enough. Eat they're getting, <laughs> they're getting, they're eating litter. If mom has, if mom is stressed and if this, I'm going to totally, this is opening Pandora's box. If mom has high titers and is a little bit stressed, she can shed high levels of the coronavirus. And that's one of the ways, I mean, a lot of cats can, if they have, the only thing high titers mean is at that point in time, their body is ramped up for corona. But they have shown that with high titers, they can shed, their, a lot of them are shedding higher levels of the coronavirus during that time. Those titers can go back down to almost null. They could go back down to like one to 100. They might be one to 64,000 and then two months later back down to one to 100. That doesn't mean anything other than where the body is at that p particular point in time. But it can be shed in their saliva and respiratory during respiratory infections. But the biggest way is the fecal oral route is the biggest way that they get it. Cats that actually have FIP are typically not shedding at all and their titers may actually be negative, which is <coughs> A huge thing in terms of trying to diagnose it. Why is it happening in your cattery if it is? These breeds right here, Bengals, Burmans, Persians, and Himalayans are genetically predisposed. For some reason their body wants to mutate that coronavirus and they have less resistance to the disease FIP. So they are more likely to get it. It's unfortunate but it is just the makeup of their body and the genetic lines. Certain genetic lines are more likely to, trans to transfer into the FIP. So if you have lines of cats that you're like, why do these kittens keep getting? I don't understand. Look at what your breeding is. Look and see, is there the same female or same male? Is it the same grandparent in the history? Look at your pedigree. This is where your pedigrees are gonna be important in trying to eliminate it in your cattery and other people's for that matter. We can breed the, we can potentially breed this to a lower incidence, like with what happened with leukemia. Leukemia is not a breed it in and breed it out. However, because of what we've done to test and find it and eliminate it, we in the cat profession can actually help get cut down on the numbers of this. I'm sure that this is a very common picture. <laughs> Coming in and going, all of them eating together, all of them sharing the same litter box. This is. This is classic, this is what they do. However, this is gonna be a way that they're more likely to continue passing corona back and forth if you're trying to get your numbers lower. Stressors, living in this crowded house. This cat is mean to this cat. You don't ever see it, 
but this cat doesn't want this cat in the litter box. That's a stress. That cat's gonna more likely be like to get, this cat's gonna be more likely to get FIP because she's stressed all the time. And the more that they're stressed, the more likely it is to mutate. This is huge. Breeding and pregnancy. Five weeks, they get bred. Five weeks into their pregnancy, all of a sudden you lose a queen. FIP is something you need to be thinking about. Um, fighting is a stressor. Surgery, one of the biggest times that they find a kitten gets spayed. The spay is huge, huge, huge. Kitten gets spayed. Month later, kitten just hasn't done well. Month later, kitten feels horrible, not doing well at all. FIP is a huge thing to consider. Leukemia is the other one. Parasites, obviously, it's going to weaken their immune system, make them more likely to get it. And if things are not sanitized, and this is really important, if you have an outbreak of FIP, I'll kind of go through some of the things you can do to maybe help lower it in your cattery, because there's there can be epidemics within a cattery where all of a sudden you can have a huge outbreak of why all of a sudden am I losing eight kittens from different things to FIP? Why all of a sudden is it happening to me? I don't understand. I'm clean. I don't, I don't understand. It's because you have an epidemic in your cattery at that point in time. Good news is after you get that controlled, hopefully you can get it. It will die out and then not show up again for quite some time. What does it look like? Pot belly, <coughs> if they have the wet form. The biggest thing, this is called the purring disease. These are the kittens that want help. They never quit purring. All they do is purr all the time. They will not eat. That is the biggest sign with these guys. They just, they will quit eating. They just will not eat. They start to lose weight. Another huge thing, my kitten has a fever. Went in, got some antibiotics. Fever went away. Next day, fever's back. Go in, get a different antibiotic. Fever may or may not go away. The, the fever does not respond to the antibiotics. They get this pot belly because the belly starts to fill with fluid. 10% of the wet forms can get fluid in the chest. If they have the dry form, even the wet form, but more the dry form, they can start to have seizures because the dry form likes to make little granulomas, like little tiny clusters of, of inflammation that can be in the, it likes to go in the eyes and it likes to go in the nervous system. So they can have seizures. Another big thing is a lot of these kittens and cats will turn yellow during their infection. When do they show signs? The biggest, biggest range, the kittens we see the most, 6 to 12 months. Why? Because it's the most stressful time in their life. I mean, they're going to new homes. They're getting spayed and neutered. They're getting shown. You know, things are changing in their life. They're getting more stressed. This says up to five years. This the studies that they've done have actually shown at three years the incidence of them converting to FIP actually starts to drop at that three-year mark. But other studies say five years. But you asked about that young adult. This is where the young adult comes into play. It's that three- to five-year mark. And then middle-aged cats, huge decline, huge decline. It's almost heard of to see FIP in that four to ten mark. You rarely see a cat in that four to ten mark, which is also really important for things that you can do in your cattery. But then once they get over 13 years, their immune systems start to change again, and the incidence of FIP will go up again. How do we diagnose this? <laughs> well, unfortunately, most of the time, the only way to truly diagnose it is after they're gone, unless the kitten's stable enough for surgery and can have a biopsy taken. However, there are some tests that can be done. They can do a simple blood test that compares some of the proteins in the bloodstream. Um, sometimes they'll have increased kidney and liver enzymes, a certain type of white blood cell tends to drop. If they have fluid, it's this yucky, bright yellow fluid, and it is thick, and it is high in protein. If you have a kitten that develops any type of fluid in its chest or in its abdomen, is running a fever, if this fluid has a high protein, you need to euthanize that kitten. Don't put it through anything more. Don't wait to find out. It's FIP. It is FIP. If you have a kitten with fluid, or even a cat, even a pregnant cat. If you have a cat with fluid that looks like this with a high protein and it's not wanting to eat, it's an FIP. Don't put it through anymore. They're only going to live two weeks max if they've got the wet form. It's not treatable. So, kittens. What can we do with our kittens? What, what can we do? What can we do now to help keep it out of our kittens? Isolation. Kittens that were raised underfoot with all of the adult cats and clean, 52% of them had positive chronotiters by 12 to 6 weeks old. 
16 weeks old. Who cares? It's corona. That's not a big deal. However, <coughs> that corona can at any point in time cause FIP. Kittens raised with only the queen, 30% of them, only 30% of them were positive at 12 to 6 weeks, 16 weeks of age. Kittens that were weaned at this 4 to 6 week mark and kept separate from all adult cats, 100% were negative at 16 weeks. Because kittens tend to get it at that four to six week mark. That's when they are exposed and their bodies are exposed to those coronavirus titers for the first time. Things that you can do to see if you're successful, you can check to see if the kittens have it or not. One, you can do the titers on the kittens to see if they're all negative. The other thing is you can run a PCR on their feces weekly for four weeks to see if they're negative. The only thing that's letting you know is, okay, this actually worked. I actually was able to keep these kittens from getting corona. But what I'm going to say about doing this, is this really what you want to do if you have corona in your cattery? Is this really what you want to do if you have corona in your cattery? And that's something I leave on your porch. It's hard to decide what, do you want to send out negative kittens that could go into a house and get exposed? It's hard to say. The breeding guidelines that are actually recommended, the Journal of Feline Medicine and Surgery sent out in 2008, got an FIP article um, over like 15 years that they actually recommend no more than six breeding animals. May or may not happen in your place. It doesn't. It's just this is some of the things that you can do. Larger proportion of older cats. Again, that incidence goes down as they get older. So if you have your younger cats, they're more likely to get the FIP. Where if you start having more of your breeders be that three to six year mark, I know that it's hard to wait to breed them to that point since so they may never take whatever. But maybe only having one litter in that young age and then waiting till they're three to then start using them to breed and only use them for one or two litters. But that three to five mark, you're less likely to get FIP. And then we talked about it being in the familial line. Again, go back and check your pedigrees. Is, it, is, there, a consistent per, is there a consistent cat in that pedigree that you're seeing kittens come? If so, get rid of that line. I'm not saying remove that. Just remove the cats from your breeding line. Remove them from your breeding line. They really recommend any Tom that's produced kittens with FIP not to use him again because he's producing so many more kittens. It's highly recommended not to use the Tom nor the Queen. You definitely don't want to breed that pair again. Never breed that pair again, but they really recommend not even using the Tom. What can you do in terms of if you're not going to, you can't deal with the breeding aspect? Separate the cats. If you're having a corona outbreak and an FIP outbreak, at that point in time, and this isn't long term, separate your cats individually, get them different litter boxes, different food and water dishes, clean them daily, bleach them daily for a period of a couple weeks. Then you can do it every couple of weeks. This is, I'm talking short term, two to three months, to help get rid of the coronavirus shedding in your, in your household for a period of time. And make sure you're dusting. The corona is very stable in the dust. And obviously this isn't probably real likely for a lot of us to totally separate them, but it will help. It will help with the viral shedding load. This isn't realistic. I don't, getting a negative cattery is almost impossible. <coughs> if you do have a negative cattery, before you bring another cat in, test it to see if it has titers for it. Test its feces to see if it's shedding, because if so, you don't want to bring it in. But most of us have corona, so this doesn't make that big of a difference. The vaccine, don't give it. Don't give it. Do not give this vaccine. If the cats already have coronavirus, the vaccine does nothing. Kittens become infected between four and six weeks old. The vaccine isn't labeled till 16 weeks of age. Don't use this vaccine. Unless you have a kitten that is coming to your cattery and you know that you've had FIP problems and coronavirus problems, then if it's negative when it's coming in, that might be the kitten to use. But they've actually a lot. I wouldn't use this vaccine. It's not recommended by Alice Wolf, Susan Little, Mike Lappin. These are the big names in in the feline veterinarians. So I really wouldn't recommend them. I talked about this. This is about the adjuvant. Remember, all killed vaccines contain the adjuvant, and the adjuvants can cause that inflammatory response, which is more likely to cause the sarcoma. The intranasal vaccine is great for the upper respiratory, but not as great for the pan luke. And if you're having pan luke, you want to use the parenteral modified live. The diluted bleach, a half a cup per gallon of water, 
and keep your cats in as small groups as possible. Test those cats when you first get them, and again at 30 to 60 days, use those modified live vaccines to prevent those chronic inflammation. This is 12 kittens sleeping on my husband. <laughs> Any questions about FIP? And people in the cat fancy are not doing it. They're looking at a cat and saying, oh, this is great. You need to look at the pedigrees. Because I know from the cat that I got that ended up with FIP, she was so closely inbred that it, her immune system was... Well, and, and the line breeding plays a role, but that line breeding can also breed for resistance. Mm -hmm. if, and that's where sometimes that line breeding can be good because you can breed that resistance. This, this particular one, we had gone back and several kittens had died well, out so, of the different lines of that. So yeah, then that's not good because you're breeding it in. But whereas if you've got lines that have been very hardy and resistant to it, that would be some good line breeding because you're breeding resistance. You're breeding resistance to it because these are cats that haven't converted. And if you do that, we can not breed it out, but we can help prevent it from running so rampant because you can have an epidemic where all of a sudden in six months time or a year's time you've lost six cats to FIP and nothing's changed from what you did before but for some reason you've got a virulent strain of FIP running through your cats right now and you want to cry you don't know what to do do you want to quit breeding I don't understand what's happening and then all of a sudden it stops and then you're fine and you don't have any problems for years so there but there's things that you can do that can help eliminate it. But I can tell you that owners out there, it's scary. And I know that if you, it's scary to talk about it amongst yourselves. Oh, I got FIP, blah, blah, blah. Everybody probably has had one. They're just too embarrassed to admit it. Whereas if we would talk with each other and work with each other, we could help get rid of this nasty, nasty, nasty disease. Yeah. How many coronaviruses are there? And is FIP a specific virus or is it only in a transformative coronavirus? Good question. So there's two main strains. There's the enteric coronaviruses, like the pit, the swine and the dog coronavirus, but there's two strains. And initially they thought it was the one strain causing it, but then when they looked at the FIP, there was another strain. And then they thought it was a certain protein, and Antec has the certain protein test that if your cat tests negative for this protein, they're not going to get FIP, or if they test positive, they will. All of those tests are worthless because in what they've shown, they've seen both strains strain one and strain two, they've seen them with the 3A, they've seen them with the 7B, they've seen them without it. So there's not any consistent, right now there's nothing consistent in terms of what is causing it. And so if a veterinarian tells you that this is what causes it, they just don't understand. They just haven't done as much research into the disease that there is out there. It's a difficult disease to understand. Thank you very much.